What's up, guys? It's KB. Make sure you subscribe to the Underground Sports Philadelphia YouTube channel. Click the bell icon down below so you don't miss a single video from us. And thanks for tuning in to another video from Underground Sports Philadelphia. Now let's get into it. Philadelphia, baby. You're going to love it. Best sports fans in the world. Actually the worst, but that's what makes them the best. No, I think it is 52 because the last week we said 51. Yes, last week was 51. Because right before oh. I went away was 50. Yes, that is correct. Why and let's that? pray we make it through this whole episode. No technical difficulties. I don't think it's going to happen, but... <laughs> Yeah, I gotta. I want to take a look and figure that out a little bit more. Your technical difficulties. That we don't have to pause the episode again, but we'll see. Well, you couldn't even tell in the recording because when I clipped videos, you couldn't tell. So that's good. But that's that's nice. Yeah, I hurt my tongue. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hello, friends. Welcome now back, Casey's burn her tongue i did welcome back to episode 52 of the f1 underground podcast um this is not gonna be that long of long of an episode um no. from compared to last week at, at least last week was last week went a long time but we had a lot last week about. we were pushing two hours last we were like, pushing two hours yeah but that's because mom said she listened to it but i was literally like we had a lot to talk about we had the race you had that yeah. question and then I had to talk about IndyCar. So we, I knew it was going to be a long one, but I didn't think it was going to be that long. Yeah, we had we had a lot to talk about. Um, but it's a good episode. I, yeah. I enjoyed it. Um, it I really episode. enjoyed it, recording it. Um, I don't yeah, like yeah. episodes. No, I don't either. I don't, <laughs> my, I don't like to hear my own voice. So I don't know how it sounded recording-wise. Um, Mom said she liked but, it. Well, that's good. That's good to know. Um, I know I at least, like... When I clip videos, that's why I at least know like the timing because then I'll just go right yeah. to there, clip it. Like, adding the captions, I hate listening to the sound of my voice. So yeah, I did when we first when we first published our episodes. I was listening to them for a bit, and then there was one day I, I think it was like driving to work in the morning or something, and I was like, I, I don't like the idea that I'm just like no, listening it's like, to myself talk. So it's also a I little had, like conceited i feel like <laughs> yes i do agree with that <laughs> listening to your own podcast you know walking into work and they're like oh how's your drive in you're like oh good i listen to my own podcast <laughs> gotta give you gotta give ourselves those views <laughs> yeah gotta get the listener number up but no i don't do that anymore um but yes if you want to listen to our podcasts and if yeah. for some reason you're not already following us and you're somehow listening to the show please go follow us on our social medias it is at underground F1 on Instagram and threads and then at underground underscore F1 on Twitter slash X. Um, yes. I've been seeing a lot of people lately, or actually I, I should say I've been hearing a lot of people on podcasts that I listen to just like stop saying the whole like Twitter slash X thing and just call it Twitter because it's yeah, been Twitter for how many years? I think like, the only people that call it X like, when I've seen things, is like, people on, like, TV or news, because, like, they have to call it X. Yeah. yeah That's, like, the only people yeah. I actually re refer to people's usernames as, like, X. So, yeah. X. Twitter. Yeah. So, yes, please go follow us. Um, like I said, if somehow you found the show and you don't follow us on our social medias, go follow us. Also, just brand new today, go join our Discord sorter server, because now the, the link is... No, the link works. <laughs> so go join that. <laughs> Um, yeah, I was very upset when I discovered that Discord, like, will just immediately just kill your links the moment you click on, like, invite people. So, yes, yeah, right. links are now fixed. Please come join the server. Come hang out. Come join our lovely little community that we have in there. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, but, yeah, welcome to the episode. This is, like we said, it's going to be a little bit shorter this week. We are going to do our normal meme of the week. Um, talk about some funny things that we've seen. Since the last time we recorded, we're going to do our weekly news, which honestly, there's, none. there's like none. So we'll, uh, well, we'll there was uh, one piece of news right before I, right as I left work that I can talk about, but it's kind of a rumor, but right. That's literally it. There's nothing. So we'll, yeah. So we'll do that. We are bringing back a history with Owen. Um, <laughs> it's not kind of, it's kind of not history with Owen, but we haven't done the segment in so long. We were like, screw it. Let's bring it back. Um, and then we'll preview Australia, the down under race. 
the and... I tweeted yesterday, happy Australia GP week. Every team is yes. obligated to post one upside down picture or text and then randomly Red Bull Australia responds. <laughs> yes. Which I For... love that they commented on it. Uh-huh. And it was it was like normal. normal. And then they re they like re commented and they were like, oh shit, sorry. And then yeah. it upside down. So it's like much better. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Good work. We but now each... command Red Bull Australia and their social media team with with what they should post. So that's oh my great. god, wait! I just thought of a. You're gonna go first for your meme of the week because I yeah. just thought of a much better meme that I posted. Uh, it has to do with Australia. Well, it the other one had to do with Australia, but um, also, right, so did, yes. did you see the pictures of Zach Brown's dogs that he posted? No. Oh my god! Please go look at them on his Instagram or Twitter. He posted the funniest pictures of his dogs. That cute. Yeah, but like it's like mid throwing like food at them. What is his what is his username on Twitter? Zach Brown Z CEO or CEO. Zach Brown CEO. Go to Zach Brown CEO. That account doesn't exist on Instagram or on Twitter, so let's go to Instagram and probably be easier to find him there. Uh, Zach Brown. I know CEO. that he exists because I it's Z oh, Brown I it. CEO. I found it. Oh, he's got a husky. <laughs> yeah, he has four dogs. Oh my god, <laughs> these look like they're so these funny. Look like drawn because of their their eyes are so big. But it's like they're throwing food at them so they get like the reaction of the dogs as the food's coming to them. It's so good. I love it. I love it. Good work, love Zach. It. Good work, Zach. Good work. But yes, okay. Um, meme of the week. I'm ready now, so I week. can go first. All right, go ahead. Um, so this has to do with Australia. Obviously, well, this came out on Sunday with like one week to go from Ferrari. So they posted this lovely picture one week to go. <laughs> surfboards. <laughs> I saw this. You saw my post? Oh, no, I didn't see your post, but I saw this picture. Okay. Um, Hold on. Let me put that back up. So yes, this picture... Looks great. It's wonderful. I immediately think of Team Beach movie. <laughs> no. A lot of people agreed with me, but it's just it's the vibes. If they were like mimicking this pose, I think it would have been ten times better. But it's I think it's just the way this it's because it's the surfboards. The and surfboards, then the, the surfboards are a weird position. Like You would think they'd be on like where the they are and then the Two of them would be in the middle, but yeah, it. Well, you would I think mean, they'd be like holding the surfboards or something, like. Mm-hmm. But the fact but that yeah. it's just both drivers on the edge, and then just two surfboards in the middle of the photo, just standing up. Yes, it's very Teen Beach movie esque. Yeah, that's that was my that wasn't my original meme. I can go back. I mean, we have time. I can have two today, right? <laughs> I think you always have two. I don't. I don't think I it's a case of. Can I have two today? I think it's but, I, I have two memes. I just have to wonder if the sound's going to work. It's a video. Uh, okay. Are you going to show the same thing that I'm going to show? No. Oh, no, you're not. Okay. What is this? It's from last year. They were Someone ma- made them create their own um, F1 teams, like the two of them. Okay. Can you hear it? I- I cannot hear the sound. Oh, okay. Never mind. So it's Lando saying Mark Webber, like making fun of Oscar because that's his manager, but Mark Webber. So the way he says it, but he makes it sound like he's saying it with a, an Australian accent. So uh-huh. I knew it. I had a feeling it wasn't going to work with the sound. I never know. So, but. You never know. You never know. Oh, I don't even bring this back. Am I new here? Got to do. <laughs> 52 <laughs> episodes in, Case. Come on. <laughs> A whole year into this thing. <laughs> Get the freaking routine down. Okay, you're next. Um, I th- tons of people have probably seen this fo- this video of Max on his most recent stream with uh, Team Redline, mm-hmm. and the video the the vi- audio for this is probably not going to work as well. But I also I mean I have it muted too. But essentially, they're starting this virtual GP, and it you know looks like hypercar and everything. But this massive accident happens. <laughs> And then you see Max's face. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow 
he makes it through and he's like screaming and he's like, you know, what, you know, saying like what and everything. He's like how did he come out unscathed? <laughs> yeah. He's like, how did I do that? All this stuff. But the funniest part about this is like all the comments underneath are pretty much like Max is showing more emotion for, uh, streaming virtual race than he does in in a real race oh he always <laughs> does like people are just making fun of it because he, he looks so happy and he's like so into the the fake race that he's like people are like where's that during the real race but he's not driving through you know a 10 car pile yeah right during, during but i wouldn't be surprised race. like knowing his luck he has to take a grid penalty or whatever he does start in the back and there's a crash. He would somehow still make it through unscathed. Oh, I feel like, like he would. Yeah. No, that man shows more emotion on, like the his red line team red line streams. He's. Do you ever see the he one also, where they're playing? I think it's a FIFA, and the Dutch national anthem starts playing, and he's like, "Oh my god, no!" <laughs> he's like, "Nah, dude, turn it off," because he just you know even he just hates it. <laughs> There was the one just the other day. I think it was from the same stream, actually, where they were like, Max, are you going to Australia? Yeah. And he was like, oh, maybe tomorrow. <laughs> no, he literally got there today. All the drivers got there over the weekend. Like, he does not care. <laughs> he does not care at all when it comes to the real races. It's just going through the motions with him. That's it. Well, there's someone, like, how that – there's that person that was tracking Taylor Swift's plane – so there's yes. one for Max for snapping. He left the other night, and someone was like, "Max has finally left." <laughs> like, <laughs> hello, but yeah, good. Max for snapping. Max for snapping. The more I see of his personality outside of the race, he is he is hilarious. Like he does he's not care. Funny. Yeah. yeah, he's jet. Yeah, he is. Act. He's literally funny. Um, but yes, I love the one of of before Bahrain. I think we talked about it. Um. Where he like comes over the mic like this. Yes, like, the like, hostage situation. <laughs> and he goes, Help! <laughs> and just like immediately pulls back. It's a great video. I love it. Because it looks like a hostage situation. So, yeah, he has like two seconds just to like get mm -hmm. one word out. And he's like, I have to let people know that I'm here any which way that I can. <laughs> and immediately, it's like, you just see up his nose and he's just, Help! <laughs> he's gone. The best Jetta weekend. Did you? See, he was like st streaming or playing video games until like he must have something that you can like see what he's playing or whatever, like connected. Yeah. But he literally was like playing until like three a.m. Of course he was during a race weekend during Jedi. <laughs> People are like Max. He did does that affect him? No, he does not, not care. at all. No, he does not care. Um, but yes, moving on. Weekly news, as I said, there is two pieces of weekly news. We can give the other one. I just have to scroll back and find it. Um, it was a update on the Christian Horner situation. Um, yes. let me scroll back because I we, it did. Um, we know. Do we know anything else other than just she the the, the female employee who was fired? Was she fired? She was suspended. Yes, yeah, she's she suspended. So yes, it's both that she um was appealing the decision from Red yes. Bull. And she filed an official complaint with the FIA. That's the one. Yeah, that's yeah. The one I couldn't remember. I'm almost back to the one for... Um, so, but the worst part about the one about the FIA in the article from the BBC, it says the BBC Sports has learned that one, one meaning complaint, or was made to the FIA Ethics and Compliance Hotline on February 2nd and made direct reference to the Horner's behavior towards a female employee, asked the FIA to look into it and express the fear that Red Bull would try to cover it up. The second oh. complaint on March 6th referenced the first and warned that the whistleblower would next inform the media. Um, it was going on about the different complaints that they've been making. But yeah, they literally complained on February 2nd. They made the complaint about Horner's behavior, and also was afraid that Red Bull would try and cover it up. Yeah. Not, not very good, but yeah. Not a, not a good look. No, not a good look at all. It, no. Um, but yes, that was a Horner update, and then literally right before we, I was walking out of work as I was posting this, there are rumors yeah. spreading that, um, I'm probably gonna butcher it, Aston Martin's, like, head... Starts with the the A. 
Armco or Armar Armarco? Aramco? Yeah, maybe. Um, they could potentially want a full takeover of Aston Martin. And they would want to target both Adrian Newey and Max Verstappen to come to Aston Martin. Interesting. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Now, there's not a lot. The article is in Italian, so I just tried to um, translate it. But it's not working. Yeah, I just translated it, too. Um, rumors have been circulating in the paddock for some time about the Saudi Arabian oil company's willingness to make acquisitions in Formula One. Uh, buh, 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 buh. Strengthening, but yeah, they became the new title sponsor. We knew that. I mean, that would be. I feel like this is just more fuel to the fire of the Max twenty twenty five leaving rumors. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if if depending on who got this, who leaked this, I don't know if they're just trying to like put Aston Martin's hat in the ring. And there's not really any substance to it. I mean, Aramco has Aramco is is stupid rich, so they could easily take over the whole team. Someone but, responded to the th my post on our th post on thread saying, like they were able to get Ronaldo for stupid money in soccer. Yeah. This like Saudi Arabian company. It would not shock yeah. me if they were able to get Max Verstappen for stupid money and on that team. No, but, they have. Yeah, they have. Dumb money. I, I could mm -hmm. be completely wrong about this, but I'm pretty sure they're also like one of the backing partners of the LIV golf tour. Like, oh, they have stupid money. Like, <laughs> I think they were like a major, like, cash, like, injection into that startup and everything. And again, I could be completely wrong about this. I, this is what, from what I remember hearing about Live when it first started coming out. But, like, they're also one of the major reasons that, like, some of the golfers who go there get such a huge pay, bonus, like, pay, like, salary. Like, they have they have stupid money. They have too much money they don't know what to do with. Yeah. <laughs> like, interesting. That would be – I mean, it also makes you question, if they're doing a full takeover in Aston Martin, they are 100% kicking Lance Stroll to the curb. Oh, He's yeah. gone. Uh -huh. He's yeah. gone. <laughs> See you, Lance Stroll. No, because they'll they'll want to ensure a win. They'll yeah, they'll want to ensure a win, uh -huh. and they'll want to ensure that they have the best chance to win. And obviously, Max is the best, you know, almost guaranteed to win. And like I said, if they have that stupid money, they would they would throw it to Max. They would absolutely just Could be you... like, hey, we can give you like a thousand percent pay increase and just come join our team. Yeah, you know? we've talked about it before, but I th a Max and Alonso team would be dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> they would be very dangerous. Very I, dangerous. There's just like that to me is like such a good combination of mm -hmm. experience, and not that Max Wins. doesn't have experience, but obviously Fernando has more. So it's like that would just yeah, that would be a very dangerous team and to watch race. Alonso's not slowing down anytime soon. He still has. No. He's still there. He's still right. He's yeah. still willing to fight. So like. That would be dangerous. Be That'd here be very, for it. Very dangerous. I feel like they would get along also. Like, would Fernando love to win one more? Yes. But I think Fernando also is probably one of the better drivers on the grid to understand your Max is your second driver to Max. Yeah. Because he's been there, he's done it. Like he understands what it takes. So plus I also think that yeah, I think he would understand it, and I think he would do a very good job of handling the like, all right, I'm good getting second. Mm -hmm. You know, and and I could cool. I can get seconds in the constructors or, or like the drivers championship. Sure, that's better than what I did last year. You know, yeah. or like that's better than potentially what he does this year. You know, so I could see it. I could. Oh, I, I, see I would be it. up for it. Could see it. Um, I also yesterday came out. Pierre Gasly has become like a part owner of a soccer team or a football team. Yes, I saw this, and the That's article right. was talking about him taking cues from That's Ryan Reynolds. What, yeah, and, yeah. And I was like, he got that. some advice from his bosses. <laughs> yeah, but but that'll be interesting to see. He's cool. planning for the future. Maybe he yeah. <laughs> planning Maybe he for this that post the, uh, F1 career. 
Yeah, and the results bonuses this year for Alpine are not going to be that good. No. <laughs> so. No, no, no. But yes. He wants, some, he, he wants some extra cash. Yeah. Do you want to do history with Owen first? Find some pit stops and then Australia preview? Sure. Yeah, let's do okay. that. Okay. Yeah. Um, and welcome back, history with Owen. <laughs> cue the music. Cue the the one clip where it's the classical music. <laughs> and I want to find it because that was good editing on my part. I'm going to find it. I can't tell you how happy I was to have a segment based off of me that had like an intro music. I know that sounds so <laughs> dumb, but the fact that I had like, it was, it was awesome. It was great. And it, it was our first segment. Happen. Like we, that was, was like the yeah. first like thought out segment. I'm pretty sure Mark helped us. Like we literally said like, Mark did say something. He was like, yeah, I should do, like, if like talking about, like, an old race before, like, each yeah. weekend and stuff. But, yeah, hits your zone. Once again, the beautiful, beautiful knowledge of Mark Schofield. Mark Schofield. Um, Never yeah, down. so history with Owen. Like I said, when we first opened up, this isn't, like, really history-ish. But I was saying to you, like, before we started, that it was just, like, this is something that I wanted to know. And the lesson uh, with that one, we could say, yeah, yeah, lesson with that one. There you go. Mm-hmm. Um, school time with that one, <laughs> school, there you go. school time with that one. That'll really, that that'll really make the cap and gown a better like costume for it, yeah. And if we called school time with that one, that would it can be about more than just history, history stuff. yeah. There you go. Okay, we're reinventing this whole segment after it's been gone for months. Welcome to uh, like a, almost a year, <laughs> yeah. Um, so. Like I said, I wanted to know more about the steering wheels on these cars that I have so graciously ranted about before in the past <laughs> and how they fail and everything. And more specifically for this lesson, that thing, those things are covered with fucking buttons. And oh, yeah. They're absolutely like riddled with buttons. And you see drivers all the time fiddling with stuff and pressing buttons. And you see the screen changing and blah, 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 doing all this. The lights. The lights. So yes. So I was looking up a couple of different things and I broke down or I made a breakdown of some of the buttons on the steering wheels. These aren't all the buttons. Um, but like I said earlier, this was before we started recording. I think there are buttons that are specific to car and, and driver and everything and, and team. So these are buttons are probably the standard for every, for all the drivers. Um, mm-hmm. But Jump right into it. We'll open up with an easy one, and that is the DRS button. That is pretty straightforward. The button just says DRS on it, and what it does is it opens the back wing for DNS start, mm-hmm. DRS to be enabled. This is a manual process. The drivers have to press the button to open it and then press the button again to close it, um, but they are also assisted by the screen on the steering wheel when they enter a DRS zone. They are told that oh. DRS is available. And or it's like when it also, first enabled. Yes, and they also have one of the one of the readouts on the screen will be their gap to the driver in front of them. So they know right then and there. Okay, I'm within a second to the driver in front of me. I can hit DRS. Um, Interesting. I never knew that. Yeah. So it is. Yeah, it's a manual process. You have to hit the button to open and close it. Um, it's pretty easy to kick it off. Um, going next into an easy one, but kind of cool. Really, what it does is the overtake button and yeah this one's cool this one i I really like this because it reminds me of like a video game where Mm -hmm. it's like you get like a speed boost and essentially what it does is when you hit the overtake button it allows the the car itself to pull energy from both the engine and the battery that you have and kind of like runs in a hybrid mode that gives you an extra power boost to then get past the driver um, the driver in front of you. Um, it's kind of what I was reading that nobody really said this directly, but it kind of is also like a safety tool, kind of like DRS, whereas the main goal is, Hey, you get this extra boost of power to get clearer and cleanly in front of the driver in front of you going into a turn. Um, so that way it's a little bit safer for the drivers Mm -hmm. going into the turns that aren't going wheel to wheel or two wide or three wide into a turn. So it just makes it a little bit safer for the drivers. Um, I do what? going back to your video game thing. It does like making you think of like Mario Kart when you have like the power up, but it's like yes, that's what it's, it's like. It's essentially <laughs> like a mushroom in, yeah. in Mario Kart. 
It's just like a one-time burst of speed, and it just it it drains your battery. But that's the mm-hmm. you know the, the the consequence of it is hey, I I want to get past this guy. Let me press the overtake button. Let me get past. Go. Um, so you'll see sometimes on drivers. I wish I had like a steering wheel to like show up or like pull up or something. But if you had a steering wheel, that'd be sick. That would be really cool. Should get that. So um, I'll get you next. <laughs> I put my I put the McLaren thing on my work desk today. The, 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 yeah, it looks really good. I'm really happy with it. Um, so you'll see sometimes not only do the but do the drivers have buttons to press um, as they're driving and everything. There's also like little knobs or like little wheels that they'll spin, um, mm. and these all do different things. So the first one being, and this is also where it kind of dives into like the location on the wheel and everything, like how it's designed per team. Um, so these can all be in like different spots on the wheel, but there's one called the strat wheel and the technical definition, uh, is it of it is it's a rotary dial, which is used to control power unit modes, like performance of the internal combustion engine. What this means is the wheel controls the balance between how much battery power is consumed and how much power is recovered. And then there's different, the reason it's called a strat wheel is because there's different strategies for this, you know, depending on the situation you're in, you know, so like there's a qualifying strat, you know, I was watching a video Mm -hmm. I used for this reference was, uh, Mercedes Sky Sports F1 on their YouTube channel posted a video of George Russell breaking down his wheel. And he says on the strat wheel, there's strat two that's is essentially used during qualifying and it's colored purple because they want to go fastest with it. And it's essentially allowing the battery to get fully drained down to a zero percent and then once he's done that lap he'll switch it over to strat five let's say and that's a battery recovery mode and it's you know all right we're just going to let the battery kind of build power back up and everything so then i can go and do another flying lap um but like i said it's called a strat wheel but it mainly delves with this balance between the engine and Mm -hmm. and the battery and it's just because they develop these predetermined ideas of like, hey, we want, you know, consumption to be at 75% and we want, you know, battery uh, gain or, or regeneration, that's a better word for it, to be at like 25%, you know, and it's okay. just these different ideas that the engineers and race strategists come up with. Um, but that is the strat wheel. And that's one of the ones where you'll see the hands, the driver's hands actually come off the side of the steering wheel and give us oh, everything. Yeah. Okay. So it's usually it's typically located down below on the, on the wheel and you'll yeah. see the driver's hands, like pick off, give it a quick t- twist and then pop it back in. Back on. And okay. you'll hear race engineers come on the radio too and be like, Hey, you know, strat two or strat three and, you know, do whatever, you know? So that's, that's what that is. Um, the other one, the next one, this is a button again. Um, this is again pretty pretty easy, pretty self-explanatory. Um, there's something pretty cool about it though. It's the pit lane speed limiter. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, you have the regulation of when the car pulls into the pit lane, you have to go a certain speed for safety. Um, and what this does is it's a button that limits the car to the mandated pit lane speed. This allows for the FIA adherence of that safety rule. But the cool part about it is it locks to that speed, though. So it doesn't allow the drivers to go above it or below it. And essentially, Almost like it's cruise control. Pretty much cruise control. <laughs> yeah. But it's it's compromising between like, OK, we're going to we're going to go this speed, but we're going to go this top speed this mm-hmm. and we want to get in, in and, and out, out as fast as we can. So, OK, you're mandating that we can go. 40 miles an hour we're going to go 40 miles an hour we're not going to do 35 we're not going to do 38 we're going to go 40 miles an hour because it'll get us to the pit you know the 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 pull in quicker and then out of the pit lane as fast as possible um so i thought that that was really cool that it wasn't just like a hey you you can't go past this speed it's essentially just like like you said like a cruise control of just like my car is the car is locked at Mm -hmm. you know 50 degrees 50 degrees 50 (laughs) miles per hour and that's it. Okay. Um, there was another button. I didn't put this on the list because it like didn't really, it wasn't really necessary. But there is a neutral gear button on their wheels as well, which is a big N. And at first, when pit stops were a lot slower, when the drivers would pull in, I mean, this is years ago too. This mm. is you know however long ago. 
they would put their car in neutral when they were in the pit stops. And oh. now pit stops have gotten so fast they need that they don't need to do it anymore. Um, I was watching. I got that from Mercedes had posted a video. It was from year, three years ago, but, you know, pretty, mm -hmm. pretty new as well. Um, the engineer that was describing it said, like, this button isn't really, like, useful anymore. Um, but who, who was Russell, the engineer? It, James Vowles? <laughs> it wasn't James Vowles. Oh, man. man. <laughs> um, the George Russell video that I watched, he says, if you hold that button, that would put the cars in reverse. Uh, uh, okay. So he, so, you know, you see someone spin out, they have to like quickly throw uh -huh. it in reverse to get out of like a, you know, a wall or something. They just hold that button. Hit neutral. And the car, yeah. And the car will go probably neutral first and then like realize it's being long held. Mm -hmm. And then switch the reverse, and they can get out and keep Interesting. going. Interesting. Yes. Um, but yeah, that's the pit limiter, pit limiter button. Um, again, that's not a dial, just a button they quick press. Um, I knew about so, the pit lane, like the pit lane uh, limiter button, but I didn't know it like keeps it at that one speed. I didn't know it held it. That yeah. was interesting. I never knew that. The other thing that I and I just I just forgot I forgot about this, but just saw it on my notes. This is also a manual process, so it's not like when they drive into the pit lane, it's automatically Automatic. like done or anything. They drive into the pit lane, they press it, and then they have to time it right, kind of, when they're leaving the pit lane. Mm -hmm. and they can press it and deactivate it. And it's, you know, you're not going to have a driver that's going to get out there and like go to half a lap and be like, oh shit, my pit, you know, my pit limiter is still on. Yeah, you know, but it's probably it's why drivers get like speeding in the pit lane penalties if right. they turn it on or off too soon. So, right. They're hitting it a little too, too early. Uh -huh. They're driving, driving away, and they're not officially out of the pits yet. You know, it is a yeah, it's a manual process um, of just okay, I'm in, press. Okay, I'm out, press. Um, Interesting. Yeah. So the other the other wheel, one of the other rotary wheels, you'll see at the bottom, or I've seen wheels where it's on the side and it's just the drivers okay. can just like rotate it with their their thumbs. Is the brake balance wheel, and. I've never understood like the term brake balance and like shifting the brake balance and everything. It is, it, it makes so much more sense than you think it does. Um, the technical definition of it is this changes the brake balance of the car to either the front or the rear, the front or the, or the rear. God, God. <laughs> You're like me. <laughs> this is bad. Um, what this means though, for the, the, you know, in layman's terms is, Brake balance affects just how much brake pressure is applied to both the front and the rear axles. And George Russell did a really good job of describing it of when you brake into the corner, all of that, all the G forces that you're experience are then mm -hmm. getting thrown to the front of the car. So oh. a lot of drivers and a lot of the way the cars are set up is like it's 50%, 58% front brake bot balanced and 42% rear brake balanced. What that means is like the, the front brakes are like 8% or like 16%, whatever the number is, stronger than the rear brakes. Which is, and it's sorry, go no, go ahead. No, I have something to add, but it, you can continue. So he's saying kind of that question? it's like, it's essentially just like the strengths of the brake of like when I press the brakes, how hard are the fronts going to clamp the wheel how hard are they going to take effect and everything and he said when you see drivers lock up sometimes going in the corners especially in the front tires mm -hmm. he goes, they'll make the brake balance less so that way they can fine tune that that balance of okay when i go into this corner it needs to be at a 45 percent front bias and then this way i won't lock up when i go into this corner and this is something this is this is the coolest part to me this is something they're doing on the fly. They're making about like, I, I read it, it was said today, it was like five or six changes to the brake balance in a lap, like all the time. They're it's just wild. constantly switching it to know. So they know like, okay, I'm going into turn one. All right, I know I need the brake balance to be, you know, 55, 45, you know, or I need the brake, or I need more brakes on the reader here instead of, you know, the front and everything. It's, it was very cool the way he explained it. This, okay, I obviously understood the issue he was having, but this, I want to go back and watch Bahrain and Charlotte Claire's onboards. Yeah. This is exactly, because I just looked it up. So he literally says he was having crazy brake balance to the rears. 
and he would lock up every lap, and he was making changes. So I want to go back and let, your just dis- like what your description just there that made perfect sense. And like now I understand why he was locking up so much, why he was like saying it kept changing. He like didn't know he didn't know what to expect. But I really want to go yeah. back, see find a picture to see where that brake balance wheel is on the Ferrari. Uh, steering wheel and go back and watch his arm boards because it's probably you'll see him probably freaking out he's the probably, whole entire he's time. He's fidgeting with it so much. Oh, the, well, yeah, it, he was locking up every corner. So God forbid. Yeah. So he was, yeah, he was struggling with it. And if he, I can't remember if he was block, if he was, if he was locking up on the on the rears, that means his rears were too strong. Like he had too much bias towards the mm-hmm. the brakes in the back. So me... yeah, this is like when I was watching the video and I was like. I don't know why I've never looked it up before just to see, but whenever I've heard like Crofty or like commentators talk about it, I'm like, I don't know what that means. Like, it doesn't mean anything to me. And then as soon as George Russell explained it, I was like, oh my God. Yeah, it makes so perfect sense. Easy. Like, it makes so yeah. much sense. Like, so it's really, really cool. But yeah, so essentially those two dials will decide, you know, like I want the brakes on the front of the car to be at 60%, and I want the brakes in the back of the car to be at 40%. You know, um, the, sorry, it really, doesn't really say cool. just says that he was having just says the rears, but doesn't say like what, but he was locking up, so it makes me interested, like what he was, yeah. I mean, I know it was so severe, his like the difference, like the percentages you just said, it his was so severe, so just thinking, yeah. like, even those like tiny numbered like percentage difference is probably. You can tell the difference, but oh, I'm so, sure. So whatever he was, but, but yeah, that is that is break balance. Um, like the next one, this is another button, um, very similar button. to the pit lane speed limiter. This is the pit confirm. What this is is literally just a button that the drivers can press to say, "I'm coming into the pits," and it's just a nice, quick, and easy way for you know. If they get the box box message, mm-hmm. or if they realize something's wrong with the car and the engineers watching, you know, the data stream in from the car don't realize it, they can hit pit confirm. The crew sitting there watching the race, getting ready for them to come into the pit, get up, start getting ready, you know, get ready for whatever needs to be done. Um, so it's super easy, nice and simple. It's just a quick, just like I'm coming into the pits 100. percent Get ready for yeah, me. just to confirm. So the pit yeah. crew is ready also. Right. Um, so jumping back to the wheels, I should have done them in order. I just really did my notes all out of order. Um, the, this is the differential entry switch slash wheel. I was, it's a call the switch, but I call it the wheel just because you see it's another one with the drivers are uh-huh. arguing with. Um, this is kind of similar to the brake balance, but essentially it technical definition is it controls the difference in how the tires rotate from one another impacting the stability of the car through corners and on straights. What that means is this is another thing that drivers will constantly just adjust during the race. They'll constantly make changes to this. Um, And it adjusts the balance for the car on each turns. And because of this, it allows for optimization of the car in these turns so they can get the fast slap um, or they can come out of corner faster than what they would have been with a different balance. Um, and I still don't fully understand this. So like my explanation might be just be like really, really off. Mm-hmm. Um, but I thought it was uh, the, the main point of it for me was this is just another thing that drivers are doing during the race when they're already driving yeah. 200 miles per hour. And they're also trying not to crash into any other people or any other things. Um, yeah, it's wild. It's insane. Um, it's when you see they're like on boards. And like how much they're moving their hands, and yeah. then they're changing gears at the same time. Like how much, many times they're moving their, they're pressing different buttons. They're on the radio. You're like, okay, how the heck are you paying, like yeah. actually paying attention? It's it is wild. Um, I mean, they have a yeah, full on computer at in their hands when they're driving. Basically, they, do. they yeah. do essentially the the onboard processing power for some of those steering wheels are better than some laptops, just because oh. of how much data they're transmitting. And everything that goes on within the car that they have to adjust on a on a moment's you know fly mm-hmm. you know um, and then the final one this one's really easy I thought it was genuinely kind of funny um, is some wheels not all of them 
will have a talk button. And essentially this opens the microphone communications to the race engineer. Mm -hmm. um, when I was watching the video that uh, Mercedes had posted, the race engineer was saying how, you know, he goes, I communicate with Lewis a lot throughout the, you know, the race and everything. He goes, there are times when Lewis doesn't want me to talk to him. So he was <laughs> like, he will, he goes, if we're ever in that moment and Lewis is coming out of it, he goes, this is how I know because Lewis will press that talk button and it's back. And the mic is open and it's kind of like in gaming where it's like, you know, push a talk. Like my mic is closed. Mm -hmm. but the moment I press like my control button, my mic's open. Um, it works like that, you know, and it's just, Hey, I need to, you know, Hey, I'm driving like, Hey, something's wrong with the car. You just hold that button while they're doing it and let go, you know? So it's very simple. I just thought it was funny. Cause it's like, we've seen obviously drivers just be like, shut, like shut yeah, up. Stop talking driving. to me. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like, I don't want to speak to you right now. Like, don't talk to me, but obviously they have to communicate. So it's the fact that they have just like a button that dictates that I thought was a little comical. Um, nice. I did. I'm just remembering this one off the top of my head. There is also, I didn't see it on George Russell's wheel that the video that I was watching, which that one was pretty, the video I watched today was four months old. So it's pretty recent. Um, did it have the WhatsApp button? I really want to know what the WhatsApp button is for. I didn't have a WhatsApp button on it. Um, like sending a text message? Is it like Siri? Like, on your studio. <laughs> um, some wheels will also have a drink button, and that's yes. for the drivers to have water given to them through their their helmet and everything. Um, yeah, that's like that video, twenty twenty two, Abu Dhabi. Charles Leclerc is like talking at the end, like thanking everyone, like all his stuff, and then all of a sudden you hear him start coughing, and he goes, yeah. "Oh, I'm sorry, I pressed the drink button." So he literally was talking and like started choking you. on water. <laughs> Out full of water randomly. <laughs> but yeah, so like I said, that's a brief synopsis that may be like all it. wrong in, in terms of how the steering no, I think on their car. I mean you had George Russell video to go off of and stuff, so I'm sure yeah. you're probably fine. But it's I it, the the biggest thing I learned was like, and I knew this because I've seen onboards and everything of their adjusting, and I always knew that drivers were adjusting different options and different settings mm -hmm. and everything as they went about this race. But learning what they all do and everything and, and how specific they get, it blows my mind even more because it's mm -hmm. like, holy shit. Like you need to tell me you're making like a percent change because you know that that's what you need to like the front brake. That's wild. You know, you're like, oh, I need 2% more brake strength on turn number eight when I'm going into it. You know, it's like, that's just, it's just wild to me. And it's amazing to show how their minds work, especially during a race. Right, especially when like that you start hearing like the different strategy calls and all that stuff like that. There really is a lot that <laughs> there's tons thinking that of. Goes on. Yeah, so, I'm about to watch this weekend. I'm going to have an on board up the entire time because I'm going to watch their as, hands on the steering wheel the entire race. That's what I might do. I was like, as I was learning about this, I was like, I have Lando's on board up when I watch the races, but I have it just as like a companion. If I'm like, now you're going to pay attention in like a battle that the main feed just isn't covering. Mm -hmm. And now I want now I want to watch it and make it larger so I can see what his hands are doing and like yeah, right. how many times he's making an adjustment. But yeah, that'll be interesting to see. Yeah, I thought cool. it was really really cool. I like it. Thanks. That was a good school school lesson or school time with school Owen. Lesson it? With school Owen. lesson. Lesson yeah. with Owen. Learning with lesson. Owen. I'll have to watch. No, it it's gotta it's gotta be an alliteration. Gotta find one with with no. We don't have that's. Your name starts with an O. It doesn't start with <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's something. There's got to be a word that means like learning or something that starts with an O. Okay, you let me know. You look it up and you let me know. Wait, what do you think I'm doing right now? Um, do you have a beverage today or no? I have my nice crisp water. Very. That was good. Was it good? That was very good. Your mic picked it up. I don't know why my mic doesn't fucking pick it up. Because <laughs> mine also now just every time I do it for pints and pit stops, it gets everywhere. I'll have to listen what? to it what? back. Why? I don't know. I don't know because I'm like opening up high so to get it in the microphone, but every time there's like drops of the drink everywhere. Oh, but interesting. Got my poppy back. Raspberry rose. It's the best one. Okay. I'm giving you pints and pit stops today. All right, let me get the let me get the timer up. Um, are, you, are you timing me? 
Do you want to do it? I can time you because, okay, hear me out. Well, first of all, did you see Linus's uh, uh, um, idea in threads or in Discord earlier I today? I see that, yes. <laughs> Five coming up with ways to get uh, Formula Law out of in uh, threads jail or Instagram jail with yeah. let her out of jail. Okay, let her out. Let her out. Let her out of jail. Threads. Yeah. Um, we have more weight on threads. We can pull some strings there instead. Yeah. Of Wait, you, did you see any highlights from Formula E this past weekend? Because they were back. No, but I saw that McLaren won their first Formula E. Race. Oh, watch, watch his last overtake. It's sick. Oh, okay. Like last, like I, maybe one of the last laps. Like very, it might even be the last lap. One of the last corners overtake. It's so good. You have to watch it. Um, but yeah. If I can watch a replay of the race, because I would like to watch it. it. They have them on, um, their coverage is pretty good on YouTube. I watched both practice sessions on YouTube. I have the app. I wonder if I could watch it on the app. No home pod. I don't want to play music to you. Um, but, but yes. So let me know when you're ready. I'm ready. I have the times up. Okay. Ready to see if I can beat it. My time of a 24 20. Okay, so here's the thing, though. How bad I, you, this? you shouldn't be bad. It's I'm not asking you questions. Okay. You're not asking me questions. No, it has to do with Australia from last year, and the wildness of it. I want you to give me. Oh fuck! I barely remember Australia. Okay. <laughs> I remember like one thing from Australia. So all right, all right. Okay, well, because there was a total of eight DNFs last year in Australia. I'm supposed to fucking list them, aren't I? No, just give me five. <laughs> you can. I can give you two off the bat. Okay. Yeah, I can tell who you're... Okay, you ready? Yeah. You should... Do you want me to give you a hint for one? Or no? I'll say hint if I want it. Okay. Ready? Set. Go. Yugi Sonoda, Pierre Gasly, Esteban Alcon, uh, Logan Sargent, and... Uh, George Russell. Okay, stop. Okay, you gave me sixteen fifty four. I knew the time was going to be good. How Yuki, many? Oh, wait for how many? I get wrong for everyone that I get wrong. How many seconds should be added? Two. Did, yeah, maybe. Okay, so who did you say? You said Yuki. So I said Yuki Sonoda first. Yeah, he's not. He didn't. He finished the race. He did not retire. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, then I went with the two, SD and, and Pierre. Yeah, you're right for those two. Yeah. Um, you said Logan, Logan Sargent. Logan you're Sargent. right for him. Yes. And then you said George Russell. Said George you're Russell. right for him. Because he, really? he blew up. Remember? His brakes like caught on fire. Oh, yes. That's right. Mm -hmm. The hint I was going to give you is we got a song after Australia last year. Because Charlotte Claire was the first DNF. He literally was the first crash. The real start of the race, he That's spun right. and he was out right away. Yes. Mm -hmm. but yes. Oh, I we, forgot about that. In this order, it went Leclerc, Albon, Russell, K Mag, Logan Sargent, Nick DeVries, Akon, and Gasly. I should have said Nick DeVries. I know, that Nick DeVries is a given. Yeah. But I don't remember Alex Albon, but apparently he that's did. Why, that's why I said uh, Logan Sargent, because I was like, he's even if I'm he's wrong, given. he's a pretty decent stab at a, mm -hmm. at a DNF. You know? Okay, so he was going to add two seconds, so you're 18.54. 18.50. Wow, that's good. Mm -hmm. That's fast. I'm going to mark. I'm gonna write that down. I'm going to replace this, because I have three times here. I have your fastest time, my fastest time, and Mark's fastest time. Okay. So... I'm going to re remove my new fastest time. Okay, okay. And then replace it with this one. And okay. mark the date down. So today is... I couldn't think March. of questions, but last year's was so wild. I was like, I'm going with him having to... Because there's so many, I couldn't even remember who all DNF'd. Um, what was it? 1640? Oh, it's 1840. 1840. Because you got Yuki wrong. I got Yuki wrong. That's right. All right. He actually finished the race. Yuki did finish the race. You're mm -hmm. right. But yes, yeah. Australia. Time yeah, the only for... thing I remember from Australia was the Alpine boys. Just No, I remember being at my old apartment. 
I felt like the race also started at like four o'clock in the morning. I don't know why, but I feel like it started much later than like midnight if it started at the same time, which I'm sure it did. But maybe because yeah, it started at, at there was two. The, it did start later. Yeah, it started at, at two because remember that it was in the story that I was in. The oh bar yeah, you were in the bar. Night, okay, okay, okay. And I was like, I'm ready to go, and then I saw it pop up on the the TV, and I was like, never mind. Because I remember going to bed, and I'm like, I'm gonna be awake in a few hours. Like, why am I even going to bed? Okay. Yeah. So it is earlier this year. Thank you, Australia. I'll take that because I think it's China. That's three a.m. That one's gonna suck. China. Um, yeah. Luckily, we had like a week break in between each one, so. Should be yeah, good. yeah, we can reset our sleep schedule mm-hmm. again, just the and then mess out. it up. Yeah. Um. But yes, so obviously Australia, the race down under, the home race for Oscar Piastri, Daniel Ricciardo. I saw a thing. I know everyone talks about hometown, like home city races or home country races, and the curse. Because obviously Charlotte Claire has probably the worst luck. If you go and right. look at Daniel Ricciardo's luck with Australia races, it's just as bad. And no one really talks about it. <laughs> Let's go see. Daniel Ricardo. Someone put, it was like, I remember seeing a graphic for it the other, yesterday. Barely a Grand Prix history. I don't know if that's going to find me in, but it's, we'll see. Um, I'm sorry to find it, Rafa. Daniel Ricciardo's past result at the Australian Grand Prix from 2012 to 2022. So, all right. So, in 2012 with Toro Rosso, he finished ninth. 2013, Toro Rosso, he DNF'd. Mm-hmm. Um, the next year with Toro Rosso, he DNF'd. 2015 with Red Bull, he was sixth. 2016 with Red Bull, he was fourth. 2017 with Red Bull, DNF'd. 2018, Red Bull, fourth. 2019, Renault, DNF'd. 2022, McLaren, sixth. That's not bad. He's in the points for all of them. But he's one, two, it's three, a lot four, of DNF. five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's never been on the podium. He's, he's got four DNFs out of nine total races. Yeah. What did he was, finish? What did he finish last year? He wasn't in it last year, remember? He wasn't in it last year. That's right. That he was, was there. Second. Yes. Um that was like his first appearance, like with Red Bull. But yeah. yeah, he wasn't in it. But yeah. That's yeah, he's not. Yeah, he's not doing too hot. Yeah, no podiums. Closest he's come is fourth, which is like I said, it's still it's good, good points. You know, he's still in the points for each one. But yeah, having four DNFs in the past nine years mm-hmm. is pretty. Uh, that's pretty brutal. Like I never don't want to hear about Charlotte Claire and the Monaco curse because it's just as bad. Like they <laughs> literally go good together. <laughs> but yeah, that I think Charlotte Claire is worse because he's had poles and then. Doesn't start or DNF well, yeah, or he's the, loses out. That's what hurts more. That's the, yeah. that's the king of that's he's yeah. the king of that is you know starting pole and not mm-hmm. closing it out, finishing the race in pole. But yeah, so hometown race for Daniel Ricardo and Oscar Piastri, um, which we already seen seen Oscar Piastri's helmet. I like it a lot. It is pretty nice. Yes, um, I did see that. That looks really good. I saw a picture of Daniel Ricardo's. He hasn't posted it, but if it's true, it's really nice. It's like got like a bunch of kangaroos all over it, but like they're all different colors. Like it looks nice. Oh. It sounds weird the way I'm describing it, but it looks nice. And I think he used like a local artist in Australia. Did he um it? no, I haven't seen him post it yet. But I also expect Valtteri Botas to have a special helmet, considering his um Girlfriend is from Australia, but he's also an honorary Australian. Um, yeah. That was the whole joke with the F1's official poster. It obviously had Daniel and Oscar, Valtteri, and then Charlotte Claire. People were like, why is Charlotte Claire there? I said, because Australia 2022 will always be famous. Yep. Always be famous. So that's why they're <laughs> that's why he's on there. Um, but yeah, so hopefully it should be a good one. Um, no news on Carlos yet. There is... Stuff coming out today that he has to be a he has to be cleared by the FIA before he Makes can sense. race. Make like he can they can say he can race, and one of the he has to do some tests. And one of the tests is I like he has to jump out of the car in under ten seconds because God forbid. Yeah, it's the the car escape yes. test, whatever it's called. Yeah. So they do that Thursday, which will be this time tomorrow for us. So we should know by tomorrow evening 
or Wednesday evening for us if he's racing. I I think he's, he's racing. Nice. Fans have seen him out and about in Australia, like going for runs the past few days. Yeah. So if he's out he's and about gonna... running, he's he's gonna race. He's gonna um, he'll be fine. Yeah. He'll be fine. Yeah. He'll be fine. But yes. Um we don't really give the facts anymore, right? It's only been two races, but no, because we have our new handy dandy yeah. and fun way of giving the facts. Besides the fact that, like I said, team no sleep. Yeah, twelve. Yeah, it's really not that bad timing wise. No, it's I was looking at it the other day, but of course I'm forgetting it now. Because um, practice one and practice three are nine thirty to ten thirty at night for us. That's it's not bad at all. Practice two and quali are one to two AM. Also not awful. Like no. Could be worse, and then the race is at midnight. But yeah, so like tomorrow. No, sorry, the twenty first. It's I'm so messed up with the dates, and we're saying them being in Australia, and then us. Um, what's it called? Like the schedule being all messed up from the last two races being on Saturday. I can't figure out the layout anymore. <laughs> oh yeah. Like I really thought. I thought yeah, today was, I thought today was, um, I, I told know. you right before, I thought today was media day. Like when we're, while we're yes. recording, I thought it was media day in Australia. No media day will be this time tomorrow. And then yes. Thursday for us, because that'll be Friday morning, will be practice one and practice yes. two. It's so confusing. I it's... can't wait until the first race after like China and Japan and Australia to be Miami. <laughs> I'll, we'll be in the same time zone. <laughs> <laughs> the time zones will be normal. If that'll make sense. But I do have to say, I think I just like early morning races on a Sunday, but it's okay. Um ready for Miami, so. Yeah. Um, it's funny yeah. looking at the calendar for the race because I give it to you in 24, 24 hour time mm-hmm. on F1.com. So the race is at 0, 0, 0, 0 on yeah. March 24th. Um but yeah, that's not bad. I mean, you're up till no. you're up till two, yeah, and then you, you you go to bed and you have Sunday morning to to sleep in. You so know? have the whole rest of the day. Yeah. That's but that's why last year's felt so long because, like, there was the red flag at the end. Yep. And then the whole race restart and that crash, and then there was another restart. So like, it was so drawn out. I remember just laying on my couch and be like, I just have to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember. I do remember watching that one too, and I was like, "Or no, that one." Was, I wasn't watching it because I was. Leaving you probably watch it the next day, or though. Yeah, and I was like, I can't imagine being up at two o'clock in the morning and or or three, you know whatever time it was last year. Even it was close to four. That. Yeah, and you're just like, just finish the goddamn race. Like, remember when they all crashed? Crazy. I was literally like, no. <laughs> <laughs> My bed is calling my name. But yeah, it's all good. Um, predictions, one through four, since one through four. We know who number one is. Although someone said his last DNF was exactly two years ago in Australia. So <laughs> if you're there, God, I would we would take it. We'll take it. We would take it. As long as he doesn't get hurt. That's yeah, it. true. That's it. Um true. Do you have predictions? Because Yeah, I can give you them. Okay, so Max, P1. This is just for race. I'm not doing quality. This is just race. Um, Max, P1. Okay. I'm going to go Leclerc, P2, because he loves Australia, and Australia loves him. If he doesn't crash out in turn, first turn. Shut up. Max, P1, Leclerc, P2. Oscar Piastri, P3. That's what we like to hear. Yes. Hometown boy. And I don't know. I feel like Checo's do, so I'm not going to put Checo in P4. Um, I go Alonzo P4. So Max, okay. Charles, Piastri, Alonzo. Okay. I like it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to go, obviously, P1, Max. Um. I'm going to – see, I really don't know. I'm really struggling with this one. I'll say this. Max is P1, 100%. Mm-hmm. We know that. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to say 
just because I have to I have to talk about them, but I don't want to be like too biased. I'm gonna go McLaren boys, fifth Ooh. and six. And fifth I'll and say, six. Fifth and six. And I'll say Lando fifth, Oscar P6. Ooh. I'll do that. And then can I do this too, actually? If I'm not gonna if if I can't figure I out I could see Lando finishing ahead of Oscar because last race it was opposite, so Lando's probably like Yeah. Got to fire that under him. That's what I'm thinking. And because I'm blanking on one through four. So that's what I'll do. I'll give you number one, (laughs) Max. So random. P5 and P6, (laughs) Lando and Oscar. And then just because it's his home race and he's he's fighting for it. He He doesn't finish in the points. I'm going Daniel Ricciardo, P10. Okay, yeah. Give him at least one. But if he doesn't finish in the points, I think Helmet Marco is taking him out of the car. Yeah. And taking him to the curb. I can see the like he has tons of pressure on him, yeah. Already, and you know, like we've talked, we talked about this a little bit last week too. Like it is only P, it is only third race of the year. You know, we have twenty one other races following this one to for him to do something. Mm-hmm. But still, he's already feeling it, and I can totally see him buying into the hype and the adrenaline of this is my home race. If I'm going to perform at any time, it's going to be now, and him doing something. Do I think he's going to do better than P10? No. No. Because I think the car still needs to to catch up a little bit. Uh-huh. I think he still needs to do a little bit to catch up because he's really struggled the past couple weeks. So I don't think he's going to do anything better than P10, but I do think he'll get points. Okay. So there you go. Not my one through four, but my one, one through and five and six. And minus ten. <laughs> everything else. Yeah. Everything else but five and six. So... <laughs> That's what I'm going with. Okay. Okay. That's my that's Owen's predictions for the race. All right. And if um, I get them 100 percent right, I'm running to the closest fucking gas station and I'm and buying a lottery ticket. Lottery ticket. Yeah. If you get them right, I can just see how we start next week. <laughs> You're gonna be obnoxious. I'll be, I'll be fucking silent <laughs> for the whole episode next week if I get it right. That's you'll be silent. Doing. You're not gonna talk at all. Well, maybe not. Okay. I'll be stunned. I'll certainly okay. be stunned that I got it right. But I just I just thought of something and I don't oh, want to no. say it. I want to say it, but I don't want to cuz I it. might really I might really regret it. And it also contradicts something that I've said before. If I get it right, if Lando and Oscar mm-hmm. finish P5 and P6 respectively, I'll join threads. Oh! I'll join threads. Oh. There you go. Okay. I'm here for it. You heard it here first, people. You heard it here first. If you made it an hour in, you've heard it here. You heard it here. Yeah. But, yes, it's an hour in. We promised this shorter episode. Um, It's shorter than an hour and 45 minutes. (laughs) Yeah. I think we were over an hour and 45 minutes. We literally, like, an hour 50. We went long. Yeah, yeah, but it was good. No, this episode was good, too. Learned a lot about the wheel, the steering wheel. Um, the steering so that was wheel. fun. Yeah. But, yes, thank you, um, as always, for joining us for another episode of F1 Underground. Um, our socials have been there the entire time, scrolling at the bottom. If you're listening, you know where to find us. Um, but please, as always, leave a comment wherever you listen to the podcast or if you watch us on YouTube. Um, helps us. Always, and please go subscribe to our main channel, um, Underground Sports Philadelphia, um, on YouTube. Obviously, we say all the time, literally a show for anyone. Anybody. Um, anybody. Phillies are about to start back up. Or they're starting, but, like... Cannot wait. Main season, Flyers on a playoff push. It's lots of stuff happening over there. So, um, thank oh you God. as... Yeah. Thank you as always for um, listening to us go on and on <laughs> we'll be back next week and you heard like we said you heard it here first if Owen gets his predictions right he'll be on thread <laughs> just, just Lando and Oscar p5 p6 okay just just that we just, know we know Max is finishing first okay Lando and Oscar have to finish p5 p6 and then Daniel can do whatever the hell he wants but okay yeah p5 p6 okay p5 p6 for the McLaren boys all right thank you thanks for listening everyone <laughs> see ya yeah.